San Antonio starts right now. Authorities tell us they finally made entry to the home. What they discovered just ahead here on GMSA. Investigators say a hangout turned into a stabbing. One man is in the hospital and police are searching for who is responsible. We have the latest on that investigation just ahead. And taking a live look out of the Alamo City, 70 degrees, a cool 70 degrees to start your Sunday morning. A lot in the forecast yesterday. What is the rest of the weekend? What does the week look like? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey just a few moments. Until then, good morning, 6 o'clock this Sunday, August 23rd. Happy Sunday. You know, when I walked outside to let my dogs out this morning, it's like, oh my gosh, it doesn't feel like summer right now. No. Usually I walk out and it's like a wall of humidity. It's still a little humid, but it felt really nice. I appreciated the rain yesterday. Oh man, so did I. Beautiful. We definitely needed that rain in a lot of locations. Got some good rain. By the way, I like how you guys match today. You know, we're doing what we can. We, we try. Full cool honesty, she texted me and I was, she was like, you can't match with me. Challenge accepted. And you know what? <laughs> you won. It's pretty good matching. Well, uh, you know what? And y'all match the weather wall too, because temperatures are really comfortable out there right now. It's 70 degrees at the airport officially 72 in New Braunfels. Many locations starting to get into the 60s. 69 in the Lotus, 63 at Bernie Stage Airfield, 63 in Comfort and 64 in Kerrville. Today is going to be a really nice day, a really pleasant summer's day. Although we could have a few coastal showers, our afternoon high temperature should be in the mid 90s, which is nice. We've been dealing with a lot of triple digits lately, and so it's nice to see temperatures a little bit cooler than seasonably average. East winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Now, yesterday we were covering the rain, but we were also talking about the tropics. It's becoming a little bit clearer what's going to happen with Tropical Storm Marco and Tropical Storm Laura. So coming up, I'll have an update on those two systems. Max, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. After reports of gunshots, authorities surrounding a home in Pleasanton, specifically the 1500 block of West Oakland. Police say the situation unfolded violently around 7 o'clock last night due to domestic violence incident. Our Alicia Barrera is live downtown. Good morning, Alicia. What's the latest? Good morning, Sarah and Max. Well, at the scene early this morning, Pleasanton, Pleasanton police confirmed that one man is dead, telling us that this incident of domestic violence um, involved a husband and a wife. The husband allegedly shot several times towards the wife, but the wife was able to dodge those bullets and make it out of the home okay without injury. But as we know, things didn't end there. Police were at the scene for several hours. Again, this all started around 7 last night. This is what the scene looked like for hours. The neighborhood and surrounding areas blocked by police. Police say they tried making contact with the armed suspect, but had no success overnight. Chief of Police for Pleasanton, Ronald Sanchez, tells us the standoff, again, lasting for hours and required the help from numerous other agencies, including SAPD, SWAT, SWAT's hostage negotiation team, along with DPS and the Texas Rangers. Coming up on GMSA at 630, you'll hear directly from Chief Sanchez on the suspect's cause of death and if anyone else was injured during this standoff. The investigation, of course, it's still in its very early stages. So as of this morning, we're still waiting to learn the name and age of that man who is dead. Reporting Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Alicia. New this morning, police are searching for a man who they say stabbed another man just north of downtown. It happened just before midnight at Evergreen Street and McCullough Avenue. Police say a woman was with a group of men at a home on Evergreen. And then that woman called her boyfriend to pick her up. And that's when one of the, man, one of the men stabbed her boyfriend in the leg. The woman and the victim drove to the corner of Evergreen and McCullough to call police. The victim was then treated and later taken to Bamsey in stable condition. Police are now searching for the suspect and continue to investigate. What initially called came in as a call for a suspicious vehicle took a very serious and very dangerous turn and it ended in gunfire. So take a look. This situation unfolding on the south side yesterday afternoon. San Antonio police telling us they tried to make contact with the suspect in the 900 block of Formosa Boulevard. That's when the man took off. That vehicle eventually found after they crashed into a home on commercial. The suspected driver later spotted at a nearby church parking lot. And when police found him, he had his hands in his pockets. Officers gave the command to remove the hands from the pockets. That's when a gunshot went off. Fortunately, no one injured and officers did not return fire a very dangerous situation to where this is this easily could have been an officer involved shooting or an officer could have easily gotten shot. 
There's still a lot of questions here at play. It's unclear if the suspect accidentally or intentionally fired that gun. That weapon was recovered on the scene. SAPD says they plan to review body camera footage and video surveillance of the incident, trying to determine what exactly happened here. Right now, police still searching for a second suspect. Well, San Antonio police have arrested a man after his girlfriend was found dead in her home earlier this week. The suspect is 29-year-old Jorge Izquierdo and has been charged with murder. Police say the victim, Cora Nickel, was shot and killed Thursday in her northwest side home in the 8900 block of Maverick Draw. Police say it was Nickel's 8-year-old child who found her. She had been shot in the head. We're told Nickel lived with her two children, ages eight and five years old. Since the incident, the children have been placed with other family members. Now to the latest reports on the confirmed COVID-19 numbers here at home here in Bear County. The city reporting 137 new COVID-19 cases. Walgreens also reporting an extra 205 backlog cases. That bringing our total here to 45,156 cases since March. 14 more people announced dead. That raises our death toll to 712, 482 people still in the hospital, 213 in the ICU, 144 people still on ventilators. The number of reported coronavirus cases in Texas has increased by 4,943 and there are 215 more COVID-19 related deaths. There are a total of 573,139 cases and 11,266 deaths since the pandemic started. State health officials reported that 446,030 people have recovered from the virus. Now to the latest update on the explosion in Corpus Christi. The bodies of two crew members of that dredging boat involved have been found, but investigators, they're still searching for two more people. Here's what we know as of this morning. The Coast Guard says the explosion happened around 8 a.m. Friday when a vessel hit a submerged pipeline. There was a series of fires on board that vessel, that vessel carrying about six thousand gallons of diesel fuel right now a full investigation is still underway the house has passed a bill to give the u.s postal service 25 billion dollars in reverse operational changes that have slowed down the mail 26 republicans defied president donald trump and gop leaders and voted with democrats on this bill however the senate is unlikely to take up the measure democrats and some others are concerned recent postal service changes will harm mail-in voting the Postmaster General says the agency will handle the election efficiently and fairly. And President Donald Trump, Vice President Mike Pence, plan to attend the roll call votes at the Republican National Convention. The RNC is set for tomorrow. The White House confirming the two will be in Charlotte tomorrow, where delegates formally will nominate them for the 2020 race. The president expected to give a short speech, but he is going to formally accept the nomination at the White House set for Thursday. Republicans moved the rest of the convention out of North Carolina because the state wouldn't allow these large scale gatherings during this pandemic. Time now, 6.08, 70 degrees out. Well, a new drama looks at a teenager's struggle with schizophrenia. Still ahead on GMSA, we have that preview. And fall is very close. You know what that means, Sarah? Pumpkin spice. We got pumpkin spice everything, including pumpkin spice hard seltzer. The hard seltzer wave continues. We're going to have the latest details. Everything. 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 Shiner now has a hard seltzer. You know, it's just the way to go, especially if you're outside on a Sunday, enjoying hopefully a cooler, maybe a little bit cooler. <laughs> Still in the 90s probably. Well, Sarah Spivey will let us know about your Sunday forecast when we come back. Good morning, welcome back and happy Sunday. Speaking of Sundays, football. Now we're only in training camp right now, but CBS is forward thinking and planning their Super Bowl revenue. CBS reportedly wants, get this, about $5.5 million for every 30-second ad in the next year's Super Bowl. The network would let advertisers out of these commitments if the game isn't played because of the pandemic. Now, the network also charging advertisers an extra couple hundred thousand dollars for ads via the game's digital broadcast. What's also in the ads is also drinks. We see a lot of drinks. The pumpkin spice craze may have started with coffee drinks, but now the flavor has been added to just about everything, including mm. hard seltzer. The Vive brand is launching a pumpkin spice hard seltzer in September. It's very limited release and will only be available at Kroger stores in Ohio, Kentucky, and Tennessee. Six packs of Vive pumpkin spice hard seltzer 
will go for a suggested retail price of $9.99. All right, open forum question, thoughts? No, thank you. Yeah. No. How about, do you guys like if pumpkin I, spice stuff? I do, I love okay. it in, in coffee. Yeah, I can, or in pumpkin, on pumpkin pie. Yeah. Love but pumpkin pie. <laughs> if I wanted to have a hard seltzer, I would do something like fruity mm. or Minty. citrusy. Yeah, yeah like no. refreshing. Exactly, I don't find pumpkin spice that refreshing. No. Katie Blake probably would drink it. Oh yeah, she for loves sure. big pumpkin spice. She's a huge pumpkin spice fan. But we are all fans of the rain that we got yesterday. Some areas receiving more than an inch of rainfall. I'll have rainfall totals for you in the next half hour. GMSA at six. But for now, enjoy these comfortable temperatures outside. It's 70 degrees. A few clouds out there. Really not too bad with dew points in the 60s this morning as well. Uh, humidity is at 87%, so you'll feel the humidity. But again. Low temperatures this morning feels pretty nice. Go out for a walk this morning. You won't regret it. It's 63 at Bernie Stage Airfield, 69 in Hello to 66 in Bulverde, 72 in New Braunfels. It's 62 in Comfort, 67 in Bandera, 66 in Tarpley, and 66 in Hondo. So great start to the day. Want to show you the future cast. Should be nice and sunny. Uh, we're not going to see the rain like we saw yesterday, but in the afternoon, one or two coastal showers could develop. Maybe you make a run for I-35, but our rain chances are just not great today. Uh, so we're really going to be seeing a pretty warm day, but it could be worse. High temperature right near about 94 around San Antonio. Uh, we have been seeing temperatures above average for uh, the entire month of August with yesterday's exception. Yesterday, our high temperature was only 90 degrees in San Antonio, so it'll be just a smidge warmer than yesterday, but it could be a lot worse. 92 for the high in Kerrville, 92 in Rock Springs, still hot out toward Del Rio, 98 degrees in Del Rio, 97 for the high in Catula and 94 in LaGrange. Now, the one good thing too this afternoon is that it shouldn't be that humid as well, so we won't have to deal with the heat index. What you see is what you got as far as temperatures go, and so it'll be nice and comfortable with dew points dipping down into the 50s this afternoon. 82 around 10, 88 at noon, mostly sunny skies all day long. 5 p.m., about 94. East winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour, and again, there could be one or two coastal showers, but most of us, vast majority of us will not see any rain and then a very comfortable into our weekend with temperatures dipping back down into the 80s by midnight. So promise that we would talk about the tropics. Tropical Storm Marco, which is in the Gulf of Mexico right now, is on the verge of becoming a hurricane. It's probably going to become a hurricane later on today potentially even this morning. It's got winds of uh, 70 miles per hour, gusts of 85 miles per hour, and Tropical Storm Laura, uh, much weaker at the moment, but it's got a long time to strengthen. It's expected to make it into the Gulf of Mexico too. Uh, thankfully, we've been getting a clearer picture on what's going to happen with Marco. Marco is probably not going to impact the Texas coast. In fact, unfortunately, it's expected to make landfall in the Louisiana coast, New Orleans under a hurricane warning at the moment. Uh, expect you to make landfall as early as tomorrow in the afternoon with, as a Category 1 hurricane. We'll keep an eye on that, but our weather basically from Marco is just going to be dry. Dry air usually on the west side of these systems and will be dry here in San Antonio. Then, I'm really honestly in something that is a bit rare, Laura is going to follow right behind it. Laura could even make landfall where Marco does uh, by Wednesday night into Thursday, so that would be very bad news for the Louisiana coast, but Laura's a little we don't know as much about Laura yet. Okay, we got to give it some time to develop in the Gulf. It could make landfall as a category two hurricane anywhere from Houston to the Louisiana coast by late Wednesday into Thursday morning. Either way, here in San Antonio, we're going to still see the same effects from that dry air around the west side of that. Of course, we'll be keeping an eye on Laura. Anything that impacts the Texas coast impacts our economy, so we'll keep an eye on that, of course. Uh, that's why we'll be watching the tropics. But by Wednesday and Thursday, we could have one or two isolated showers or storms from Laura. Still, though, it's going to be a hot and fairly dry week. High temperatures will climb back up into the triple digits as soon as the middle of this upcoming week. So thank goodness for yesterday's rain. Yeah, I'll take 94 today. Yeah, it's going to be <laughs> nice compared to the week ahead. Uh, back to the triple digits. Thank you, Sarah. Thanks, Sarah. 617, 70 degrees out. Do you love cake? Yes. Duh. Well, today is <laughs> National Sponge Cake Day. We have some fun facts ahead on GMSA. <sighs> and new movie headed to theaters this weekend looks at a teenager's struggles with schizophrenia. A preview of words on bathroom walls next on GMSA.
And that's when we found out. I have schizophrenia. Charlie Plummer stars as a teenager dealing with mental illness in words on bathroom walls. Some people just hear voices. Good morning. But I see mine. The subject matter was something, and just in terms of mental health as a whole, something that I've always really been passionate about, as long as I think it's talking about it in an honest way and in an interesting way. And in this case, that was really the driving force for me at the beginning when I first got the script. I really fell in love with Julia Walton's book. I read the novel and I was just really taken with um, the character of Adam and his voice, you know, uh, and I felt there was a great opportunity for a new or different kind of representation of this particular mental illness that I hadn't really seen before. The film takes a unique approach to visualizing Adam's illness for the audience. I think people, generally speaking, have uh, an idea of schizophrenia specifically that it's this you know, kind of out of this world uh, mental illness that's just impossible to understand unless you have it, but it's actually really not. And I think if, if people do take the time to just to just try, then, then you can see how, how really anyone can connect with a lot of what's actually happening. You have to let people discover all your dark places inside because those are the people that can show you what's real when you can't see that for yourself. In Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. Looks good. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'll see it. 622, 70 degrees up. But today is National Sponge Cake Day. Is that a Twinkie? Oh my goodness. Well, we have some fun facts <laughs> next on GMSA. Well, today we celebrate a. <laughs> <laughs> We're celebrating cake this morning because it's National Sponge Cake Day. There's always a reason to celebrate, always a reason to smile. I love sponge cake, and it can be one of the trickiest cakes for bakers to master. Do you bake? I try. I'm not very good at I it. I like that you say you try. I try. Oh. We're always very accepting of bakers here. <laughs> a perfect sponge cake can stand tall, and bakers can maintain a fine crumb while keeping the cake moist. The sponge cake is thought to have originated in the Caribbean. It's believed to be one of the first non-yeasted cakes. Hmm. I think it's just... I just a. see Twinkies. I love Twinkies. Well, and the, well, the beauty of Twinkies, I mean, they're, they last forever. I got nothing for that. Time now, <laughs> 626, 70 degrees out. Well, the Rose Garden at the White House gets a makeover after 60 years. In our next half hour, we'll tell you about all those new changes. And the House passing legislation to boost the U.S. Postal Service and prevent possible mail delays. We have the latest details next. Good morning. Welcome back and happy Sunday, 630 this morning, August 23rd. Thank you so much for joining us this wonderful Sunday morning. And it feels wonderful outside. Mm -hmm. I mean, we it might still be in the 90s later, right, Sarah? But it's nice just to be a little Stealing cooler. Stealing her thunder. <laughs> Absolutely. No, you're right, Sarah. You're totally right. Uh, the forecast today calls for afternoon highs in the 90s. So enjoy these Pleasant temperatures right now. Look at that. It's 68 in Holotus, 66 in Bulverde. It's 62 in Comfort, 64 in Kerrville, 67 in Bandera, 67 in Lost Maples, uh, 69 at Simpson, and 69 at JBSA Randolph. We may even dip into the 60s officially at the airport uh, because we've still got about 30 minutes or so before we start to see uh, temperatures start to rise around the area. 82 around 10, 88 at noon, 94 for the high. That's not too bad. Last several days, with the exception of yesterday, we've been into the upper 90s, if not into the triple digits. East winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Yeah, a coastal shower could be possible, but yesterday's rainfall was about it. And honestly, it's starting to become a little bit clearer what both Tropical Storm Marco and Tropical Storm Laura are going to do. It's not looking good for rain chances around San Antonio. I'll be back with a look ahead to the tropics in just a few minutes. Max, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Police in Pleasanton tell us a man tries to shoot his wife, then refused to speak to police. All of this leading authorities to try to peacefully negotiate with this armed suspect. The standoff began around 7 o'clock last night and ended just a few hours ago. Our Alicia Barretta is live downtown with the latest. Alicia, police tell you one person is dead. 
Yes, well, hours after trying to shoot his wife and then ignoring those commands of authorities, we know uh, from police, from Pleasanton Police Department, that that suspect turned the gun on himself, dying inside his home. And police also did confirm that the wife, the victim in this case, was able to make it out of the home last night, way before um, police even got to the scene, and she's okay. She made it out okay. This all unfolded around 7 last night in Pleasanton. Police say it started with a dispute between the husband and a wife, and of course things unfortunately escalated to shots fired and that man dying. Pleasanton uh, Chief of Police Ronald Sanchez says it didn't take long for police to arrive to the couple's home off of Oak Haven Road, which isn't far from the main road in Pleasanton. Um, that road is Oak Lawn. Chief Sanchez says the situation required the help from numerous other agencies, including SAPD, SWAT, SWAT's hostage negotiation team, along with DPS and Texas Rangers. We attempted to make contact with the subject in the trailer for several hours with no response. Uh, the decision was made to make entry into the trailer. Uh, he was located in there. He was deceased from an apparent gun, self-inflicted gunshot wound. Chief Sanchez added that fortunately no one else was injured in this case. Again, the, the only fatality reported is of that suspect. And right now the investigation is still in its very early stages. So we're still waiting to learn the name and age of the suspect. Reporting live, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Alicia. Also new this morning, a series of crashes ends with three women in the hospital, one of which had to be rescued from the vehicle using the jaws of life. So take a look. This was a situation just before 1 a.m. near I-10 and Ackerman. Police on the scene telling us there was a three-vehicle crash. One of the women involved with the initial crash called family members for help. When that family member arrived, she started using tools from the trunk to try to help out. That's when another vehicle rear-ended her, pinning her inside the trunk. Once rescued using the jaws of life, she was taken to Bamsey in critical condition. The two other women in the initial crash taken to Northeast Baptist in stable condition. Right now, investigators telling us that the driver responsible for pinning the victim is being checked for DWI. According to the Workforce Solutions Alamo, the unemployment rate has dropped in Bear County in July. The organization's monthly report shows the rate in Bear County is now at 8.3%, which is down by 0.3% from June. The report also shows that Bear County had the lowest unemployment rate compared to other 12 other counties covered by the organization. Atascosa County had the highest rate with 9.4%. The overall Texas rate of unemployment has also decreased by 0.4% and the rate sits at 8%. Now in the latest for Vote 2020, after a rare Saturday session, the House passing legislation to boost the U.S. Postal Service and potentially prevent mail delays. But it may start and end there. It's a non-starter for Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell. ABC's Karina Mitchell has those details. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell is effectively killing the Delivering for America Act after the House of Representatives overwhelmingly passed the legislation during a rare Saturday session. He had previously said the Senate would not take up a standalone postal bill. He's now accusing Democrats of, quote, ignoring the urgent needs of the American people. The House voting Saturday to approve legislation allocating $25 billion to the U.S. Postal Service. The bill prioritizes all official election mail as first class and prohibits the removal of sorting machines and mailboxes, which some say have contributed to delays in mail delivery. Don't mess with USPS. The vote largely along party lines with Democrats supporting the bill, but more than two dozen Republicans joined Democrats defying House GOP leaders and President Trump, who reacted to the vote on Twitter, writing, this is all another hoax by the Democrats to give 25 billion unneeded dollars for political purposes. Trump threatened to veto the bill if it ever reaches his desk. Don't pay any attention to what the president is saying, because it is all designed to suppress the vote. The vote coming just 24 hours after the Postmaster General Louis DeJoy, a Trump appointee and donor, assured senators that ballots will be delivered on time. This sacred duty is my number one priority between now and Election Day. DeJoy will testify before a House committee on Monday. Karina Mitchell, ABC News, New York. 
And back here at home, HEB expanding store hours starting tomorrow. Stores will be open from 6 a.m. to 11 p.m. until further notice. That's most stores. Now, stores also have updated their purchase limits for products customers can buy. They are still limiting some items like wipes and soaps, but they are no longer limiting paper towels, eggs, and a few other listed items. For a full list of those hours for specific stores, we have all that information right now. Just head to KSAT.com. It's the final weekend of summer vacation for many students in San Antonio. Judson, Harlandale, Somerset, New Braunfels, Southwest, and Northwest Northside ISD will all start classes tomorrow. Como ISD and Medina Valley ISD start classes on Tuesday. Be sure to check with your local district to see if classes will start in person or virtually or as a hybrid. And to see our latest headlines about the new school year and how COVID-19 is impacting it, just head to our back to school section of KSAT.com. And as Sarah was saying, for so many students and families in and around San Antonio, this weekend could be the last of your summer vacation. A lot of districts ramping up classes Monday and Tuesday. That's why this morning on Leading SA at 8 a.m., Somerset ISD Superintendent Dr. Saul Hinojosa joins us live. We want your input and your questions as well. So just head to the Leading SA section of KSAT.com and submit your questions. We now have an entire Send Us Your Questions section. And time now, just about 638, 70 degrees out. While many students are starting college soon, they are now have to learn how to cut their expenses still mm. ahead on GMSA. We have some tips they can follow on how to save money while in college. College budget's always a fun one. Plus, yeah. the White House Rose Garden getting a big update after 60 years. We have the details next. First, let's take a look outside with live cam. 638 this morning, nice cool 70 degrees. So if you're up, go outside, enjoy it. And our Sarah Spivey will let you know our full Sunday forecast and for the week when we come back. Good morning and welcome back. A new study from the journal Communications Earth and Environment shows Greenland's ice sheets melting faster than ever before, causing rising sea levels that could threaten coastal cities all around the world. Now, this study shows the country lost about, get this, 532 billion tons of ice last year. That's a lot of ice. Researchers say the melting is likely to get worse because of the increase in greenhouse gas emissions and because of climate change. Well, the iconic White House Rose Garden has been renovated for the first time in 60 years. First Lady Melania Trump spearheaded the redesign. Ooh. The White House says the updates include the redesign of the plantings and the placement of new limestone walkways, plus updates to the technological elements of the space. Mm. President John F. Kennedy commissioned the original design in 1962. We see that Rose Garden a lot with interviews. NASA now monitoring an asteroid that will come close to Earth the day before the U.S. election. Look at that. The agency says the asteroid named, yeah, I'm going to try this one, 2018 VP1, we'll go with that, First identified from an observatory in San Diego County in November of 2018, the diameter is about 6.5 feet. Doesn't seem that big. It'll come too close to our atmosphere. NASA says the probability of it impacting Earth, very small, just 0.1 yeah, or 0.4. Don't worry about it. <laughs> no, I'm not concerned. Sarah, I know you said you didn't know a lot about this asteroid, but when our atmosphere, like how big is our atmosphere. This isn't like an Armageddon situation. How right? big is our atmosphere? I mean, like when it's like, it's going to, it sounds like it's going to. If like you could give us a whole science lesson on all of the Earth, that would be fantastic. <laughs> sounds good. Planes fly above the stratosphere, which is at about 30,000 feet. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, we see our atmosphere extend up to about 60,000 feet above sea level and above the surface. So if kids are awake, they're getting a free science lesson right now. I love science lessons from Sarah Spivey. Thank you. I actually have some science lessons online on KSAT Kids. Check them out. Talk about the atmosphere. Most recent one is about clouds. My dad watched it. He did? Yeah, did we you were like it? Yeah, we were talking okay, about how great good. it was. That's awesome. Well, there won't be too many clouds in the air today. There are some out there, but this is a look at yesterday's highs. 90 degrees for the high temperature yesterday because of the morning rain. That is not bad at all. In fact, that's the first time we've been below average for the entire month of August. It's been a hot month. 90 degrees around San Antonio. It was only in the 80s for the high temperature near Pleasanton. Unfortunately, Del Rio because you didn't see any rain, you got up to 100 degrees. This is a look at the rainfall yesterday. Vast majority of it fell along and east of I-10 and I-35. Up to an inch and a half out toward Gonzales, some healthy rainfall there. A little bit closer to Bear County and San Antonio. New Braunfels, more than an inch of rain. Uh, almost eight 
tenths of an inch of rain out near Universal City, officially at the airport 37 hundredths, and almost an inch of rain up toward Bulverde. The good news here, a lot of healthy rainfall fell along the aquifer, so we'll be able to see that number probably rise. And as you know, we're under stage one water restrictions, so it's nice to see the aquifer go up a little bit. Right now outside, very pleasant, 70 degrees with humidity, uh, dew points in the 60s, which isn't that bad. Just a few clouds out there this morning to start our day. It's 63 at Bernie Stage Airfield, 66 in Bulverde, 67 in Bandera and in Hondo. A great start to the day. Get out there and do your Sunday morning walk. Uh, early today because temperatures are really just going to go up from here in the future cast mostly sunny skies. There might be one or two isolated showers along the coastal plain potentially 10% chance along that I-35 corridor to see an isolated shower or storm. But in San Antonio, it'll stay dry today and we'll be looking at high temperatures. Not too bad again. We got to 90 yesterday. We'll be a little bit warmer today without the rainy start, but 94. That's good in my book, especially when you consider that the average afternoon high is 96, so we'll be cooler than average. 82 at 10, 88 at noon. Oh yeah, a coastal shower could be possible. 94 for the high temperature, mostly sunny skies and east winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour. So for the break, mention the tropics. Here we've got Tropical Storm Marco on the verge of becoming a hurricane. Currently winds sustained at 70 miles per hour, gusts up to 85 miles per hour. And Tropical Storm Laura, a lot weaker right now than Marco, but it has a lot of real estate to strengthen because it's expected to move up into the Gulf as well. Marco, our path of Marco is becoming much more clear and it looks like it's going to impact the Louisiana coast and not the Texas coast, making it to hurricane strength and making landfall as early as tomorrow afternoon as a category one hurricane. That's hurricane warnings all along the Louisiana coast, and that includes New Orleans. Uh, but for us here in San Antonio, the result of Marco, we're just going to see dry air on the west side, so we're not going to see any rain from Marco, unfortunately. Laura, however, is going to be a little interesting. Uh, we've been seeing forecasts waver with Laura. It could make landfall as a Category 2 hurricane anywhere from Houston all the way to the Louisiana coast, potentially impacting the same area that Marco does, uh, and that'll make landfall uh, by about late Wednesday and into Thursday morning. Now, if Laura makes landfall closer to Houston, we could see an isolated shower or storm, but the effect is pretty much the same here in San Antonio too, just going to be dry on the west side of Laura. Uh, and so it'll be hot as well. Temperatures are going to climb to about 100 degrees uh, during the middle and in the end of the week. And again, only an isolated shower or storm possible on Wednesday on, or Thursday. And we'll be continuing to watch the tropics and keep you updated. So enjoy the high in the low to mid 90s today. It'll be hot by the middle of the week. Thank you, Sarah. Thanks, Sarah. 647, 70 degrees out. Well, mysterious locked safe appears out of nowhere and chocolate is literally raining from the sky. What? That's today's and take a look at this. Good morning. Welcome back and happy Sunday. A mysterious safe appearing in the middle of a rural community and it's letting everyone scratching their heads. CNN's Jeremy Roth has today's look at this. Two questions are on the minds of residents in upstate New York's Barry community. How did a giant safe end up in the middle of a farmer's field? And more importantly, what could be inside? It could be holding millions of dollars. <laughs> it could have confetti in there. The safe mysteriously appeared in Kirk Mathis's field with a note attached that said whoever could open it could keep what's inside. But was it a legit offer or fool's gold? Does it matter? It's a mystery box for crying out loud. Locals and authorities tried and failed to crack the safe. Mathis plans to hide it, saying it's more fun to leave it locked. My personal feeling is to leave it as a mystery. If you open it, the show's over. A mystery was solved in Switzerland after chocolate literally started raining from the skies. Residents posted pics of cocoa sprinkles covering cars and window panes in the small town of Bolton. But before they went cuckoo for cocoa dust, a local confectionery took credit. Local media reported it was the result of a ventilation system malfunction at a nearby Lint chocolate factory, which, along with wind and rain, spread the sweet sugary soot all over the town. 
Finally, take a look at a non-candy-related weather phenomenon that unfolded when a massive water spout churned up the surf along Miami's Golden Beach. According to the National Weather Service, it briefly turned into a low-grade tornado. Some fallen trees were reported, but no injuries or structural damage. Locals say water spouts are actually quite common for South Florida. For Take a Look at This, I'm Jeremy Roth. Were you singing Chocolate Rain? Be honest. I was singing Chocolate okay. Rain. <laughs> Thank you. All right, it can be very difficult to save money, especially when you're working, going to school, and trying to have a social life. It's really tough in college, but these money-saving tips for college students can make you more aware of how you spend and where you could save your money. First, it's important that you make a budget. Before you cut down on your expenses, you need to know what they are. Make a list with items like rent, food, and transportation. Another helpful tip, make your own meals. Cook at home, cook a lot, and eat leftovers. Always look for free entertainment, and don't be shamed by using coupons. Don't shop without checking for coupons first. A lot of grocery stores still print out that weekly flyer, and of course, you can find deals online. I never cooked in college. Really? It's, it was tough. I mean, maybe like oh. heat up mac and cheese or ramen. But. No, I, I, ooh, that's where I like learned to cook. I try to get creative. 6.53, 70 degrees out. The instant noodles, those were key. Oh, that, that's not cooking, Max. <laughs> Still got creative. All right, so let's take a look at what's coming up on Good Morning America. Hello, good morning. Coming up on GMA, the Gulf Coast bracing for two tropical systems this morning. Marco and Laura preparing to deliver a double punch. Rob Marciano right there on the ground, tracking it all. Plus the wildfires in California destroying hundreds of homes, forcing more than 100,000 people to evacuate. How the forecast for that state could impact the efforts to put out those fires. And finally, President Trump's sister reportedly describing him as a phony and a liar who only cares about himself and allegedly saying the president can't be trusted. The explosive new audio this morning. It's all coming up on GMA. We'll see you very soon. And ends a standoff fatally after turning the gun on himself. Police say this all unfolded around seven last night and it started with a dispute between the husband and wife. Pleasanton Chief of Police Ronald Sanchez says it didn't take police long to arrive to the couple's home, which is located off the main road Oak Lawn off of Oak Haven Road. The wife was able to make it out of the home without injury, but Chief Sanchez says the situation required the help from numerous other agencies, including SAPD, SWAT, SWAT's hostage negotiation team, along with DPS and the Texas Rangers. Eventually, the decision to enter the mobile home was made only to discover the suspect was dead from an apparent self-inflicted gunshot wound. Right now, the investigation is still in its early stages and we're waiting to learn the name and age of that suspect. Reporting Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Well, it's official. We've dipped into the 60s this morning, 69 degrees at the airport. That is the coolest we have been since June 14th in two months. Amazing. So it does feel good outside. Get out there. Temperatures are in the 60s just about everywhere. You look out toward Rio Medina, 66 degrees, 63 at Bernie Stage Airfield, 62 in Comfort, 63 up in Kerrville this morning. Today it's going to be pretty nice. The temperatures will be in the 80s for the morning hours. And then as we head into the afternoon, mid 90s, it could be a a lot worse and there could be a coastal shower there uh, along the coastal plain east winds at five to ten miles per hour looking at the seven day forecast look at those numbers climbing back up into the triple digits by the end of the week we will keep an eye on the tropics but it is looking like we'll be dry here in san antonio from both tropical storm marco and tropical storm laura very cool well, there you go. It's a perfect day to try out the pumpkin spice uh, hard seltzer. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm just starting out there. All right, we're about to take an hour-long break for Good Morning America, but we have so much to talk about when we come back. We're going to go leading SA. We have the superintendent of Somerset ISD, how they are preparing for their first day of school, set for tomorrow. And, of course, we'll have more on the ongoing United States Postal Service situation, the House passing a bill yesterday. We'll talk about its future later in our newscast. Yeah, and, of course, the tropics are always updating, so I'm going to have updated numbers on both Marco and Laura. Again, it looks like Marco's going to impact the Louisiana coast. Laura, we're a little bit un more unsure about, so we'll have more updates for you. All right. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you for watching. We'll see you back here in an hour. Sarah Squared. Yeah. Sarah Squared. <laughs> Live from KSAT 12, 
Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. In Pleasanton, authorities finally made entry to the home where a suspect barricaded himself since last night. The discovery and how this standoff ended just ahead on GMSA. A lot of our local school districts are starting classes this coming week. We check in with the Somerset ISD superintendent to talk about preparations and expectations for the coming semester. And taking a live look out of the Alamo City, a picturesque moment to start your Sunday morning. 71 degrees, the sun is out. It's going to be a great day. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey to see what the forecast looks like today and what it looks like for the rest of the week. Good morning. I'm Max Massey. And I'm Sarah Acosta. It is Sunday, August 23rd. Thank you so much for joining us this Sunday morning. And I loved that sunshine yes. out there. The sun is out. We had rain yesterday. It's going to be a great day. So Sarah, what can we expect for the rest of it? Yeah, almost complete weather from 24 hours ago where we were dealing with rain around San Antonio yesterday morning. Not complaining. We needed that rainfall, uh, but it is nice and comfortable outside right now. In fact, temperatures dip down to 69 degrees at the airport. That's the coolest we've been since June 14th, so in two months. Pretty awesome. Outside right now, it is mostly sunny, 71 degrees, and we do have relatively low dew points for the start of the day. Dew points in the upper 60s. Today we can see really comfortable weather with dew points falling into the 50s by the afternoon. And it is nice outside right now. 70 at JBSA Randolph, 64 at Bernie Stage Airfield, 66 in Bandera, 64 in Kerrville, 62 in Comfort, 72 in Canyon Lake, and 73 in New Braunfels. But it is going to get warm today, as it always does in the summer months. We'll be at 81 around 10, 88 at noon, 90 for the afternoon high temperature. Not that bad when you consider that 96 as our average high temperature and we have been hot just about every day of August so far with the exception of yesterday. East winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Now we've got a lot to unpack in the forecast including an update on both Tropical Storm Marco and Tropical Storm Laura coming up in a bit. Thank you Sarah. Gunshots at a home in Pleasanton end with an hours long standoff between police and the suspect. Police say the situation was a violent one that happened around 7 o'clock last night. Our Alicia Beretta is live downtown with the latest. Good morning, Alicia. Good morning. Well, this incident involves a married couple, and police say this all began with an argument that led to a domestic violence incident, and then shots fired. According to police, the, the target of those shots fired was the wife. We know several rounds were fired, but that domestic violence victim became a survivor as she was able to make it out without any gunshot wounds. For hours, authorities remained at the scene to try to reason with the man and get him to surrender. However, that wasn't the case. Out of precaution, the neighborhood was surrounded by numerous officers and several other streets had to be blocked off until early this morning. However, the suspect never cooperated with police. Chief Sanchez says the suspect never even responded, and hours later, they were able to locate the suspect. However, that suspect was already dead. In the next half hour, we'll hear directly from Chief Sanchez on more of the details of how they made this dis discovery and who they, what other agencies they worked with. Reporting live, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Alicia. New this morning, one man is behind bars after Bear County deputies say they were led on a late night chase. Deputies say they attempted to pull over a driver at Jones Falls and Misty Springs Drive after he ran a stop sign around 1030 last night. The driver then led them on a high speed chase through several neighborhoods until he crashed on Cherry Road and I-35. Deputies tell us the driver was arrested after being checked out by EMS and smelled of alcohol. Allegedly, he faces charges of evading arrest and a possible DWI. Now to the latest of COVID-19 numbers here at home here in Bear County. 137 more people testing positive. That's in addition to an extra 205 backlogged positive cases from Walgreens. This brings us to a total of 45,156 positive cases since March. 14 more people have died because of COVID-19. Our total death toll here in Bear County, 712. 482 people still in the hospital, 213 in the ICU, 144 on ventilators.
City officials say the Texas Department of Health and Services confirmed those backlog numbers are a result of coding errors from last week. Of the 59,000 test results, 205 positive results belong to Bear County. It breaks down to 32 from June, 163 from July, and 10 from August. Meanwhile, another tragic milestone passed. More than 800,000 people from around the world have died because of this pandemic. The United States remains the country with the highest death toll. More than 175,000 people died here in the United States. And for a lot of students and families in and around San Antonio, this is the last weekend of summer vacation. Several districts starting class this coming week. One of them, Somerset ISD. In today's leading essay segment, Somerset ISD Superintendent Dr. Saul Hinojosa joins us live. Good morning, Dr. Hinojosa. Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us. So right off the bat, basic question. What is the initial plan for your district as classes are set to begin this week? Well, of course, we are starting tomorrow 100% virtually. We're going to do that for the first two weeks, and uh, we anticipate bringing students back into our classrooms after Labor Day on September the 8th. And Superintendent, what are some of the unique challenges Somerset families face? Well, being that we're in a somewhat rural area, connectivity is a big issue. We do have areas uh, in our district where people don't have access to internet. So the district has, uh, uh, passed an initiative to issue students hotspots, but there's still areas where even though we uh, issue a hotspot that students still cannot uh, access the internet. Now, you talk about the hotspots, we talk about the digital divide a lot. What are you making, how are you making sure that some of the students in your district, some of the families who don't have those hotspots or maybe don't have laptops, how are you making sure they don't fall between the cracks? We've set up task force at each campus, uh, a group of four to five individuals, and their uh, uh, solo task is to go make home visits. Uh, we've uh, been out knocking on doors uh, for those parents that we can't get a hold of. So we want to make sure that we reach that we reach every student. As of uh, Friday, I believe we've touched about 90 per 96% of our families. So we're we're gonna starting Monday, we're gonna go try to find that other four percent. And Superintendent, what other preparations has the district had to make this upcoming semester? Well, we, we're, we're blessed to have some great teachers in our district. For the last two weeks, they've been preparing. They've been preparing how to use these learning platforms that we're going to be offering our students. You know, we, we have a, a, a great contrast. You know, some of our uh, teachers, of course, are uh, they're, they're they know uh, technology and uh, so some of our others are just learning. So we want to make sure that uh, we collaborate to make sure all our teachers are able to uh, teach uh, digitally to all our students. Like many other districts, you guys are planning to head back to the classroom after Labor Day. What precautions are in place for when students do return to the class? Well, we, we've taken every safety measure that we can think of. We want uh, parents to know that when they do send their students uh, to our campuses, that they're going to be safe. And uh, we're here to support them, whether they uh, uh, choose uh, virtual instruction or face-to-face -face instruction. Uh, we're going to offer a quality education for all of our students. And before we go, Superintendent, you know, what would be your overall message to the Somerset community? I know a lot of people are nervous. There's a, every, every day is a different change. So what would you tell them? Yeah, we're, we're, we're here to support them. We're here to uh, make sure that they get a quality education. We've had a lot of success over the last uh, few years. Uh, you know, we've built trust in our community and uh, we're going to continue to work together to make sure that students get a quality education in our district. All right, Superintendent, thank you so much for your time this morning. Good luck with the coming semester. Thank you. Time now, 808, 71 degrees out. And we have football. I know there's a lot of questions amid this pandemic, but right now training camps across the NFL are underway. That includes two here in Texas. We have the Houston Texans, the new look Houston Texans, and the Cowboys. We're going to take a look at their first round wide receiver who is already turning heads. Okay, we've talked about murder hornets, uh. Uh, hornets a lot, a lot. Okay, but now there's killer wasps. What is going on in the world? <laughs> Happy 2020. <laughs> I know. After the break, we talk, we take a look, look at these new insects that are making their way, yes, into Texas. Great. The murder hornets were just in Washington, so that wasn't too much of a concern. I'm not happy about this. Uh, just sit, sit back, though. Enjoy 71 degrees. We got the sun. It's a great Sunday morning. We still have another 50 minutes of the news to tell you about. We'll be right back. 
Well, if you thought 2020 couldn't get more in our way, think again. Now, instead of murder hornets, there are cicada killer wasp, or how we say here in South Texas, chichata killer wasp. But don't worry, they actually don't mean any harm to us. Hmm. This native insect paralyzes chichatas with their stings and then drags them to their nest for their larva to eat. They may look big and intimidating. <laughs> oh my gosh. But they actually rarely are aggressive toward humans. Rarely. So there's a chance. Oh, Max. <laughs> Not only are they on the move here in Texas, but they can grow up to an inch and a half long. The female wasps capable of stinging, but are rarely aggressive. However, the men are not able to sting, but are known to be more aggressive towards humans and other animals. This is all according to wildlife officials. The Chichata killers nest in sandy areas and dig burrows about six inches deep and are most active during July and August right. when those Chichatas appear, the field guide says. Huh. I don't care. Even if I know they won't sting me, they're still terrifying. They're pretty terrifying. An inch and a half. That's pretty big. All right. And next we are talking about the tropical storm in preparation of everything. We're actually going to let Sarah Spivey talk about this. Yes. OK, so Marco is not expected to hit the Texas coast. Mm. You don't have to worry about Marco hitting the Texas coast, but it did look like it a little bit uh, over the past couple of days. We've had some developments here, and so be out of an abundance of caution, uh, Padre Island decided, the seashore decided to close down. But Marco is expected to actually hit Louisiana. Mm. Now, when it comes to Laura, that could end up making landfall anywhere from Houston all the way out to Louisiana coast as well. So we've got a lot to talk about in the forecast pretty much. Uh, now, uh, a look outside. It is nice and sunny outside right now. Uh, temperatures are warming up, although we started off in the upper 60s. So. The upper 60s was how low we got this morning. That is the coolest we have been since June 14th, which is good news. 71 degrees outside for the temperature right now. So we're already warming up with just an hour or so of suns sunshine. It's 64 at Bernie Stage Airfield, 66 in Bandera, 69 in Tarpley, 71 in Hondo, 67 in Bulverde, and 73 in New Braunfels. Today, it's going to be totally sunny for most of the day, but in the afternoon we could see a few clouds and uh, maybe one or two coastal showers may make it to that I-35 corridor between New Braunfels and Austin. Here in San Antonio, though, we will stay dry, and if you do live in New Braunfels, Seguin, closer to Austin, you're more than likely going to stay dry as well today. Thankfully, afternoon high temperature is going to be a little bit more tolerable at 94 for the high temperature today. Yesterday, we only got up to 90 degrees because of yesterday's rain. I hope you got some good rain. There was good rain that fell generally east of I-10 and I-35. Some places got up to two inches of rainfall. However, today, no real rain in the forecast and it'll still be hot out toward Del Rio, Eagle Pass. High temperatures going to be near the triple digits. Thankfully, dew points are going to be comfortable in the afternoon. We won't have to worry about a heat index value. Uh, dew points are going to fall into the 50s, which is good news. And uh, we won't have to deal with a heat index. We'll be at 80 at 10, 88 at noon, 94 uh, for the afternoon high temperature. East winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour. A coastal shower or two could be possible, as I've mentioned, but don't bank on the rain today. East winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour. By the way, our average high temperature 96. So if we don't hit 96 today, this will be the second day in a row for the entire month of August that we have been below the average high temperature. It should be a really pleasant evening. Let me go into more detail about the tropics. Now earlier it was looking like Marco could potentially make landfall anywhere along the Texas coast, but because Marco has rapidly strengthened, it's almost a hurricane. Its track is going to be a little bit closer to the Louisiana coast and I'll show you that in a moment. Meanwhile, Tropical Storm Laura also expected to strengthen and eventually make its way into the Gulf of Mexico. Let's first talk about Marco. Here's the track for Marco expected to make landfall in Louisiana uh, by about Monday afternoon, potentially as a category one hurricane. Uh, so that's why areas like New Orleans are under a hurricane warning. Uh, thankfully, Marco not going to be anywhere near the Texas coast. Uh, we'll 
be seeing dry air behind that. Usually on the west side of these systems, we get dry air, so it'll actually be dry in San Antonio and potentially hot as well. Laura's future remains a little bit more uncertain. It is expected to strengthen potentially up to a Category 2 hurricane, but notice it could make landfall anywhere from Houston and Galveston area all the way out to Louisiana. That would be, if that happens, if Laura makes landfall on Louisiana coast, that would be two landfalling hurricanes within days for the Louisiana coast, which is not great. But Laura is expected to make landfall at some point late Wednesday into Thursday morning. Now notice this dry air behind that storm as well. So when all is said and done here in San Antonio, we're not going to see any direct impacts from both of these systems. Instead, It'll be hot, it'll be dry. High temperatures are going to climb to about 100, 101 Thursday through Saturday. And as far as rain chances go with Laura, we could get one or two isolated showers and storms on those outer bands. But again, as we get closer to those dates, we're going to have a much narrower view of where Laura will land and we'll be able to refine that forecast there. Boom, back to the triple digits. So take advantage of this <laughs> afternoon. Time now, 819, 71 degrees out. Well, still ahead, TikTok says it will fight the Trump administration in court. Details on when the company could begin taking legal action. Mm. Are you on TikTok? No, uh, I'm not that cool. Yeah, I'd say trendy, but whatever. And he is worth the hype. That's what Tony Pollard has to say about one of the newest players at Cowboys training camp. We're going to tell you who he is and why you should be excited if you're a Cowboys fan. Good morning and welcome back in the sports world today. A lot going on, including talking about the Spurs. San Antonio may not be in the playoffs, but they're already working to get better for next season. Derek White undergoing surgery from an injury that may have happened before his standout play in the bubble. Remember, he was killing it in the bubble. Derek, though, dislocated second toe on his left foot. We're going to be very specific today. He is expected to be ready by the start of next season. Remember, the offseason a lot shorter this year because of the pandemic. A lot of fans, though, hanging their heads because the Spurs didn't make the postseason. Put that head up, chin up. We got a lot to be excited about. Derek White, a crucial part of the future of the franchise. Lonnie Walker, young, exciting, can dunk on everybody. Keldon Johnson, only a rookie. He showed out and showed up in the bubble. And DeJounte Murray, a long 6'6 guard. There he was. Look at that. Derek White, very impressive. Don't forget the name. And we are in August, even though we have this pandemic. We still have football. Cowboys first round pick, CeeDee Lamb. You probably watched him a little bit in college. Very impressive. And he is not just impressing me. He is impressing everyone at training camp, as, you know, a first round pick is expected to do. The former All-American wide receiver from Oklahoma getting a lot of praise from running back Tony Pollard, saying he's worth the hype. Meanwhile, Amari Cooper, he better put his money where his mouth is because as far as the Cowboys next season, he says that there could be three 1,000-yard receivers. But right now, Lamb is just focusing on adapting to the faster pace of the NFL. And the Houston Texans, we can't talk football in Texas without the Texans. Deshaun Watson entering his fourth season in the league with the Texans. During his tenure, the Texans have a phenomenal record, 24-13 and 13 in the regular season. Postseason record, not that great, just one and two. Remember, they got beat by the Super Bowl winning Kansas City Chiefs last year. But Watson is used to winning at every level. He had a state championship in Georgia. Then, remember, he beat Alabama when he was at Clemson in college. But now winning a Super Bowl is the top priority. Deshaun says small steps can make a big difference in terms of, you know, that pursuit of winning a Super Bowl. And it all begins with the mental mistakes, getting rid of them, and don't forget, both teams looking a lot different this year. Amari Cooper had said 3,000-yard receivers. That's big for Dak Prescott. Looking for another contract. I'm just going to go off on a rant. They tell me I got a lot of time. Go for it. The Texans, they are a new-look team because, remember, they got rid of DeAndre Hopkins. He is now on the Cardinals. They also brought in Brandon Cooks and new running back David Johnson. Are you a Texans or Cowboys fan? No, I'm not answering that. Oh, okay. I'm a football <laughs> fan. There you go. 825, 71 degrees out. Well, coming up in our next half hour, the cast of the new Suicide Squad film has been announced. We'll tell you who is making it to the big screen. Plus, the latest out of California and how firefighters doing their best trying to extinguish the fire that are ravaging the state. We'll be right back. Good morning and happy Sunday. I'm Max Massey. 
And I'm Sarah Costa. It's Sunday, August 23rd. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Max, do you have any plans for this afternoon? Um, you know, I have to make it outside. Yesterday was the perfect lazy Saturday. You, though, bringing the sunshine into the newsroom. You know, it's it, well, the sun is now back out. Look, we have sun. We have Sarah Costa. We have Sarah Spivey. We're calling ourselves Sarah Squared. Yeah. Hey, okay. It's going to be a new thing. <laughs> Max We're going to have Sarah. koozies with our names on them. Ooh, okay. Fanny Squared. packs. Let's Fanny do it. packs. I was going to say it's like a new GMSA band. It is like a new Max GMSA and the Sarah band. Squared. Sounds good. <laughs> Max and the Sarahs. There you go. Now, good news. The aquifer really responded well to yesterday's rain. The aquifer is actually up more than a foot in the past 24 hours. That 10 day average is also going up as well, but we are still under stage one water restrictions. More good news feels great outside. Temperatures dip down into the 60s in San Antonio for the first time since June. That's impressive. 68 in Bandera, 66 at uh, in Kerrville, 63 in Comfort, 73 in New Braunfels, and 72 in Stinson. Now looking ahead to the forecast, it's going to be a beautiful Sunday. It is going to get warm in the afternoon. It's summer after all. 94 for the high temperature, but the average high is 96. So we're going to be cooler than average for only the second day in this month. The other day, yesterday, when we got up to 90. Now, east winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour. And yeah, there could be a coastal shower or two, but we've got a lot to talk about in the tropics as well. I'll be back with a look ahead coming up. Thank you, Sarah. In Pleasanton, a man tries to shoot his wife and then refused to speak for, to police for hours overnight. Authorities tried to peacefully negotiate with that suspect after he locked himself inside his home. The standoff began around 7 last night and, and just a few hours ago. Alicia Barrett joining us live downtown with the latest. Alicia, you tell us we now know one person is dead. That's right, and things ended fatally after that suspect turned the gun on himself. Police made the discovery early this morning around three that that man was dead inside his home. And this all started around seven last night in Pleasanton when police got a call for shots fired at the location of this home. Pleasanton Chief of Police Ronald Sanchez says the couple's home isn't far from Oaklawn Road. And it started with a domestic dispute that escalated to violent moments. And here's what Chief Sanchez had to say what happened overnight. The husband discharged a firearm several times towards the wife. She was not hit. Uh, no one was shot. Uh, no other people were shot. Uh, he barricaded himself in the home. We had a standoff uh, for several hours. Uh, San Antonio Police Department, a, a SWAT team and their hostage negotiation team came out along with Texas Department of Public Safety and the Texas Rangers. Eventually, the decision to enter the mobile home was made only to discover again that that suspect was dead from an apparent self-inflicted gunshot wound. That suspect's name and age has not been released just yet. But again, police are still investigating exactly what led up to this. And again, um, the the target of those gunshots at the beginning was the wife. But again, she was able to make it out of the home without any gunshot wounds. Reporting live, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Alicia. New this morning, police still searching for who's responsible for stabbing a man just north of downtown. Take a look. All this happening just before midnight. Evergreen and McCullough Avenue. Police telling us a woman was with a group of men at a home on Ever Evergreen. The woman then called her boyfriend to pick her up. That's when police tell us one of the men she was with stabbed the boyfriend in the leg. The woman and the victim drove to the corner of Evergreen and McCullough to call 911. The victim, that boyfriend, treated and later taken to Bamsey at last check in stable condition. Right now, police still searching, still investigating, trying to figure out what exactly happened. In your morning headlines, Texans receiving unemployment can expect an extra $300 a week as early as tomorrow. The additional benefits will be on their first payment request on or after today. These funds will also be retroactive to the benefit week ending August 1st. The Lost Wages program is part of an executive action signed by President Donald Trump that pushed Congress in an effort to provide financial relief to those who are still out of work amid the coronavirus pandemic. 
and the House passing a bill to reverse the changes blamed for the USPS delays. The measure would also send $25 billion in emergency funds to shore up the United States Postal Service ahead of this November's election. President Donald Trump, though, urging a no vote, calling concerns over mail delivery a hoax, and the White House says he will vote veto the bill if it passes the Senate. More than two dozen Republicans broke with the president and backed the legislation in the House. Now to the desperate battle against some of the largest wildfires in California's history. More than a million acres have been burned. Tens of thousands of people forced out of their homes. ABC's Kaylee Hartong has the story from Northern California. This morning, dramatic new images, homes engulfed in flames. As two of the largest fires in California's recorded history burn more than a million acres across the state. Homes and cars charred. Another round of lightning strikes expected today, ramping up the danger for firefighters. Nearly 12,000 strikes in the past week, responsible for sparking hundreds of fires. We do have some incoming weather that is very concerning to us. Hot spots like these are a real concern. This heat is extreme. The smoke is incredibly thick. Crews working to put them out before the weather here gets worse. More than 13,000 firefighters responding across the state as two dozen major fires pull crews in all directions. The erratic winds, the steep terrain, the heavy fuel, uh, the trees that are falling, uh, that's one of the, the biggest hazards out here. New rescue video showing harrowing conditions for those on the front lines. All right, guys, I'm going to get down here, okay? A sheriff's helicopter saving two firefighters trapped north of San Francisco. Straight up. Using a 100-foot-long line to reach them, flames just 75 yards away. Thick smoke blanketing most of Northern California. And this view from the sky showing just how vast these fires are. More than 100,000 evacuated. People like Naomi Sakumbi fearing they'll come home to nothing. The ground is still hot. So you have to be patient. It's the worst waiting game possible. And that was ABC's Kaylee Hartung reporting. And now TikTok says it will fight the Trump administration in court over an executive order that has banned its operation in the U.S. The company says it could begin legal action this coming week. That's unless an American business buys the platform. TikTok says it has tried to negotiate with the Trump administration, but encountered what it calls a lack of due process. The White House has argued the company could be a security risk. And I know a lot of friends who work in corporate America, they have been mandated to delete it from their phone because of the possible security risks. Ooh, TikTok. I know. Future. 837, 71 degrees out. Oh, a new trailer has been released. Ooh. Revealing an impressive cast of bad guys and gals just ahead who will be starring in the Suicide Squad. Actually, it looks really good. Will Smith killed it in the last one. And Russell Crowe playing a rather scary individual in a new movie called Unhinged. We're gonna hear what he has to say about the role. First, let's take a look outside with live cam, 71 degrees. It's a beautiful Sunday morning, so if you're up and about, make sure you definitely take advantage of it because Sarah Spivey is saying later this week, the temperature looks like it's going to be heating up. We'll be back. Democrats held nothing back, and now it's his turn. How will Donald Trump and the Republicans respond? Now, today, the president's chief of staff, Mark Meadows, on Trump's re-election pitch to the nation, and the powerhouse roundtable pulls no punches. Today on ABC's This Week with George. Welcome back. If you're a fan of Russell Crowe, he has a new movie coming out, which finds him playing rather a scary guy. That's right. Rick Damagella talked with Russell Crowe about the new movie called Unhinged. Well, that's where we are in this world today. We seem to have developed a fundamental inability to apologize to anyone for anything. Russell Crowe plays a dangerously deranged man triggered by a road rage incident in the thriller Unhinged. With this movie, with all the tension that's on screen, the actual set energy was really chilled and really just purposeful and so it's funny how that can happen sometimes you know i don't even think you really know what a bad day is but you're gonna find out when you're playing a character so devoid of humanity where you cannot access the things that you would normally access in your job um it make it does make it more difficult you know 
having a kind of a hard time lately. I'm sorry. His detachment, his failure in certain areas, you know, have drained him of that humanity that we all rely on when communicating with people and stuff. And so, yeah, it was it was a, a tricky character from that point of view. Karen Pistorius, who plays the target of the unhinged man, also found the production challenging. We were filming, um, you know, just before the hurricane season. So you probably know it's, it gets just crazy sweltering hot. And um, we were stuck in this little old, well, you know, vintage uh, Volvo. And so then, you know, that mixed with the climate, mixed with the sort of heavy breathing day, day in and day out um, was really intense. What do you want? I need you to learn what a bad day really is. In Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. Well, Unhinged release date has been changed several times and it was slated to open this week, but the studio has delayed its opening until late August. And also in Hollywood, villains galore Warner Brothers releasing a teaser trailer unveiling an impressive cast of bad guys and bad girls that will be featured in a new film, The Suicide Squad. I guess this would be the sequel. Now, the film set to be released in August of a year from now in 2021. It's gonna be the sequel, like I said, to Suicide Squad. It's gonna be focused on one of DC's most popular villains, Harley Quinn. Margot Robbie, Harley Quinn, reprising her role, uh, alongside Viola Davis, among other notable additions, Idris Elba, love him, Pete Davidson, okay, John Cena, whoa. I love him. He's great in movies. That's a great cast. I'm excited for that one. I, I hope they bring back Will Smith. This world. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> and the Wonder Woman 1984 trailer has been released. There's a lot of hype about this one. The mm. film stars and director revealed it at a DC fandom virtual convention on Saturday. It features Gal Gadot, Kristen Wiig, Pedro Pascal, and Chris Pine. One of the villains can make wishes come mm. true. So Wonder Woman's lost love appears to be back. All right, are you guys superhero fans? DC, Marvel? I yes. like the I like the Marvel movies. Mm. Not really DC, but I think Wonder Woman was pretty good. See, I, I think I'm more like DC just because I, I think I like the darker view of it. I mean, yeah. Ooh, Max, Justice. Max is so dark. No, well, I like how they did it with Batman. And one thing we didn't mention, Robert Pattinson's Batman, they released a trailer on that too. Pretty neat. Boom. I actually saw a picture of Gal Gadot and Brie Larson together, Captain mm. Marvel and DC Comics, Wonder Woman. Ooh. So, you know what? There's room for everybody, I think. <laughs> and you know what? We got some good rain yesterday in some places. Let's look at yesterday's high temperatures. 90 degrees was the high temperature in San Antonio. That is the first time for the entire month that we've been below average for our high temperatures. And it was all because of the rain. Even some spots like Gonzales and Pleasanton did not get out of the 80s. Here's a look at that rainfall from yesterday morning. Uh, more than half an inch out in Bernie. Uh, 37 hundredths of an inch at the airport officially. Uh, meanwhile, Gonzalez, an inch and a half. Guadalupe River, an inch and a half down there in Carnes in uh, DeWitt County uh, and near Canyon Lake about an inch of rainfall as well. About an inch plus out at Bulverde and just about everybody east of I-10 and I-35 saw a decent amount of rain. And just about everybody around San Antonio saw some rain yesterday morning. This was all good for the aquifer. A lot of this fell along the uh, Edwards Aquifer recharge zone. That's why we've seen the aquifer go up by about a foot since uh, 24 hours ago. So very nice news there. Right now outside, it feels great. Also a result of the rain, uh, we were able to see temperatures cool down. This morning we got up to, we got down to 69 degrees, which is the coolest we've been since June 14th. Right now it is 71, so we are warming up. Uh, dew points are comfortable. It is a little muggy out there, but we'll be able to see dew points fall into the 50s by this afternoon. Here's a quick check of temperatures. It's still in the 60s up at Bernie Stage Airfield, 64 in Comfort, 69 in Bandera, uh, and 69 in Kerrville, 76 in Del Rio, a little warm spot out toward Del Rio, 74 in Catula, and 73 in Carrizo Springs. Showing you the future cast here because it's going to be a really sunny day. However, in the afternoon, there could be one or two uh, stray showers that make it from the coast up to the I-35 corridor. Today's chance for rain is honestly only about 10%. So most of us are going to miss out on the rain totally today. So I hope you got some good rain yesterday. The high temperatures, however, should be fairly comfortable. High temperatures in the low to mid 90s uh, all around Bear County could only be up to 92 up at Bernie, 93 in Leon Springs. What's more is humidity should stay low, so it should be a pre pretty 
pleasant summer day, considering that it can get pretty hot and humid here this time of year. 80 at 10, 88 at noon, 94 for the afternoon high east winds today at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Let's go ahead and break down the tropics. Talk about the tropics, the two systems there. Uh, we've got Tropical Storm Marco on the verge of becoming a hurricane, strengthening to hurricane status here probably if not by lunch, then definitely by the afternoon. Uh, and it's in the southeastern portion of the Gulf with winds sustained at about 70 miles per hour. Meanwhile, tropical storm Laura, still a tropical storm, but it's got a lot of real estate to cover, so it's going to strengthen into a hurricane as well. Now, earlier yesterday, it was looking like Marco could potentially make landfall anywhere along the Texas to Louisiana coast, but things have become a lot clearer when it comes to the path of Marco. Marco is likely going to impact the Louisiana coast, making landfall as a category one hurricane as early as tomorrow afternoon. That's why there are hurricane warnings for areas around New Orleans. And then Marco will continue to fall apart over land. We'll be on the dry side of that system, so no rain expected from Marco here in San Antonio. Laura, a little bit uh, more uncertain about where it's going to make landfall. Looks like it could make landfall as a Category 2 hurricane anywhere from Houston out to Louisiana. That would be pretty bad for the Louisiana coast to get a hurricane on Monday afternoon and then by Wednesday night getting another hurricane. That would be bad for them. Uh, and honestly, either way, we're not going to see much, if anything, from Laura as well, because we'll be on the west or the dry side of that storm. So it's going to be a hot and fairly dry week. The only chance of rain is isolated on Wednesday and Thursday, and that's if Laura is closer to Houston than it is to Louisiana coast. So we'll probably refine that forecast as we get closer to it. But tropics starting to become a little bit more clear what's going to happen there. Thank you, Sarah. Thanks, Sarah. 849, 71 degrees out. We continue to bring, the, bring you the latest information you need to know as kids start the new school year tomorrow on GMSA. We will hear how Somerset teachers are preparing for their first day and what parents can expect. In the news you need to know before you go, a series of crashes ends with three women in the hospital, one of which had to be rescued from a vehicle using the jaws of life. This was a situation just before 1 a.m. near I-10 in Ackerman. A woman pinned to one of those vehicles remains in critical condition this morning. Two others taken to Northeast Baptist in stable condition. Investigators say the driver responsible for pinning that one victim being checked for a DWI. And before we end this morning, we want to share some good news with you. We love good news. One essential worker says all of your thank yous matter. Terrell Hagler from Philadelphia says he starts his mornings every day at 530 as a garbage man. And since the pandemic began, he's been posting videos online. He has documented the kindness from all the families along his routes, the donations, the cold drinks and the waters, all of those acts of kindness, large and small. Now, Terrell is raising money for his fellow workers who have been working overtime and for those who have been battling this virus. I just saw uh, an opportunity for, for me to do something for my coworkers to help raise awareness and to buy proper PPE and cleaning supplies for the trucks to make sure that me and my coworkers stay safe. So far, he's been able to raise more than $26,000. Wow. He went on to share a final message to all the people who have been kind to him, saying, your voice matters, so keep the hope strong, keep the fire burning, and keep fighting for what you want, because one day it will be listened to. He had his own t-shirt. That was cool. That is cool. <laughs> and look at this beautiful shot of downtown San Antonio illuminated by the sun. It is 78 degrees outside. We have already seen a nine degree temperature jumps. Whoa. Since the sun rose. So it was nice and it's getting warmer and it's going to be warm this afternoon. 94 degrees, but it's a lot better than the, <laughs> the uh, most of August where we've been up to 100 just about every day. East winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour. And yeah, coastal shower storm could develop. Now, we'll be watching the tropics, but it still looks like it's going to be dry here in San Antonio. High temperatures climbing to 100 degrees. So it's going to be hot this week. All and right. then it gets better, right? After that <laughs> fall. <laughs> in fall, it'll be in better. Fall. And then pumpkin spice lattes. And there right? you go. <laughs> and pumpkin spice lattes. All right, well, thank you guys so much. Thank you for watching. Have a great rest of your Sunday. Have a good Sunday. The Max and the Sarah. Sarah <laughs> squared. Bye, guys. <laughs>